In our last video, we learned how to use MATLAB to perform basic arithmetic calculations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponentiation. In this video, we'll expand our use of MATLAB to include MATLAB's built-in functions. MATLAB has thousands of built-in functions. These include, of course, the trigonometric, logarithmic, and exponential functions that you're probably already familiar with, but those are really just the tip of the iceberg. This video will emphasize the general use of MATLAB's functions rather than trying to provide a list of the functions available in MATLAB. A truly exhaustive list of MATLAB's functions is from MATLAB's documentation. Before we introduce the functions available in MATLAB, let's review mathematical functions in general. As an example of a mathematical function, consider f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 1. The function has a name, f. The function's argument is x. It appears in parentheses after the function name. This is in symbolic form since it isn't defined for a specific value of x. However, we can use the symbolic function here to determine the value at any arbitrary value of x. For example, to evaluate the function at x equals 2, just substitute 2 for x, perform the math to get f of 2 equals 11. We can think of the output of the function when x equals 2 as 11. So, we can think of a function as something that maps or transforms one number into another number. It's kind of like a black box that converts this number to that one. MATLAB functions are analogous to mathematical functions in that they transform or map an input argument into an output argument. However, they don't provide the symbolic relationship between the input and the output that the mathematical function does. They take numbers as input and return numbers as output. The output numbers correspond to the values of the function for the corresponding input argument values. For example, the sine of a number can be calculated using MATLAB's SIN function. The function name, of course, is SIN. The input argument is listed in parentheses after the function name, exactly as with our mathematical functions. The main difference so far is that the input argument, the variable x in our example, needs to be defined as a number before our MATLAB function can use it. The SIN function returns a number corresponding to the sign of the input argument. This number gets assigned to an output variable name, y, in our example. So, in summary, the input argument, a number, is sent to our function, and our function returns an output argument, another number, which gets assigned a variable name. Arguments sent to a function are always numbers. We can put the numbers directly within the parentheses if we want. For example, we can determine the sine of 2 by typing sin, open parentheses, 2, close parentheses, at the command prompt, and pressing enter. By the way, the argument to the sine function must be in radians. It's probably more common, though, to define the argument as a variable. For example, if we define a variable, angle equals pi over 2, we can then use that variable as an argument to the sine function. For example, I'll define a variable, var1 equals sine of angle, the sine function then calculates the sine of pi over 2 and returns a number. The number is assigned to the variable var1. The argument to a function can be in the form of a calculation. Let's calculate the sine of pi over 4 and assign it to the variable var2. var2 equals sine of pi over 4. The argument has to be a number. MATLAB performs the calculations necessary to create a number before sending the argument to the function. Many MATLAB functions have several input or output arguments. We'll talk about multiple arguments in the context of converting a point from Cartesian to polar coordinates. The MATLAB function to do this is cart to pole. Just to review, a point in two-dimensional space can be represented in several ways. One form is Cartesian coordinates, which correspond to our usual x, y axes. The distance from the origin in the x and y directions are represented as a pair of numbers. In our example, the point P is 
A units in the X direction and B units in the Y direction. Alternately, we can represent the point P in polar coordinates by its radial distance from the origin, represented by the Greek letter rho in our example, and the angular distance of the point from the positive x-axis, represented by the Greek letter theta on this figure. We can convert between the Cartesian coordinates a, b, and the polar coordinates rho, theta, with MATLAB's cart to pull command. The cart to pull command accepts as inputs the values of a and b, in that order and returns the value of values of theta and rho in that order. Keep the order of the arguments in mind. They're important. Let's look at the cart to pull syntax in a little more detail. All MATLAB functions have a name. This function's name, of course, is cart to pull. The input arguments are provided in parentheses after the function name. The output arguments are listed on the left side of the assignment operator. There are a few details about this syntax that you should note. The input and output variables are provided in list form. The arguments are separated by commas. The output arguments are enclosed in square brackets. If there's only one output argument, the square brackets are optional. If you want to put brackets around a single output argument, though, it won't hurt anything. Importantly, please keep in mind that the arguments are set according to their order in the list, regardless of the variable names. The first argument in the input argument list will always be interpreted by the function as the x-axis coordinate, and the second as the y-axis coordinate, regardless of the name of the variables. Likewise, the first argument in the output argument list is going to be the angular position, and the second argument is the radial position, no matter what you name the variables. Now let's do a couple of quick examples with the cart to pull function to illustrate the use of functions with multiple arguments. In our first example, let's convert the Cartesian coordinates 3, 0 to polar coordinates. The point is three units from the origin, so we expect rho to be three for this example. Since the point is on the x-axis, we'd expect theta to be zero. We can use the MATLAB command, theta comma rho is equal to cart to pull of three comma zero to perform the conversion. Notice that the x-coordinate is first on the input list and the y-coordinate is second. First, I'll just type the command as it was on the previous slide square bracket, theta, comma, rho, close square bracket, equals cart to pole of three, comma, zero. This returns theta equals zero and rho equals three, as we'd expected. Let's modify this a bit, though, and type rho, comma, theta, equals cart to pole of three, comma, zero. Now, theta is equal to 3 and rho is equal to 0. The radial distance is returned as the second variable in the output argument list, which is now called theta. The first variable is the angular distance, which just happens to be the variable named rho. Obviously, this can get confusing, so it's a good idea to give your variables meaningful names that reflect the values that they're assigned. In our second example, let's convert the Cartesian coordinates 0, 3 to polar coordinates. The point is again 3 units from the origin, so we'd expect rho to be 3. Since the point is on the y-axis, we'd expect theta to be 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. The cart to pole command returns angles in radians, by the way. We can use the MATLAB command theta comma rho is equal to cart to pole of 0 comma 3 to perform the conversion. Notice that the x coordinate is still first in the input argument list and the y coordinate is still second. This time, let's assign our values to variables and use variables in our input argument list. Let's set the x distance to 0 by typing x underscore dist equals 0 and the y distance by typing y underscore dist equals 3. Now let's type angle comma 
rad underscore dist equals cart to pole of x underscore dist comma y underscore dist and follow our command with a semicolon. Now the calculation is done, but the semicolon suppresses display of the results. To see the angular distance, type angle and press enter. The angle is pi divided by 2, which is what we'd expect. To see the other variable, type rad underscore dist and press enter. The radial distance is a 3 also, as we'd expected. Finally, a word of caution. The names of most MATLAB functions are pretty intuitive, especially after you've had some experience with MATLAB's naming conventions. In fact, in many cases, you can guess the appropriate function name and how it works and be completely correct. However, it's always a good idea to check the help files to make sure you're using the function correctly. That is, by the way, how I knew that the cart to pull function returns angles and radians. Anyway, let's look at a couple of common sources of confusion which may help illustrate this point. The exponential function is very common. What might think that MATLAB would define a variable, maybe e, which corresponds to the mathematical value e? Let's try calculating e squared and see what happens. MATLAB's telling us that there's no variable named e, contrary to what we may expect. Actually, MATLAB's exp function calculates exponentials. To find e squared, type exp of 2. If we want the value of e, just type exp of 1. By the way, the character e is used in MATLAB to denote exponential notation. So 5 times 10 to the third can be defined by typing 5e3 at the command prompt. As another example, to perform a base 10 logarithm, I would probably guess that the function is log. However, if I type log of 10, I don't get 1, which is the base 10 log of 10. Let's use the help function to figure out what's going on. To see the help about the log function, type doc space log. The log function is performing a natural logarithm. Let's scroll down to the bottom of the help topic list for a similar list of functions. Log 10 looks like a pretty good candidate. Let's see what that tells us. OK, log 10 is actually a base 10 logarithm. Now let's retry our previous calculation. Typing log 10 of 10 returns 1, as we would expect. In the videos so far, we've learned how to perform arithmetic operations and use MATLAB's built-in functions. Essentially, we're now able to use MATLAB as a very powerful version of a handheld calculator. However, this approach does not nearly take advantage of MATLAB's capabilities. Our next topic will be script files. Script files allow us to program MATLAB to perform a series of commands in a batch without outside interactions from the user. This approach is far more efficient than typing commands at the command window, as we'll see in the next video.